Um, have you ever, you know, you don't have to say anybody or anything. Have you ever thought like, man, I don't know if these people are natural. Like, have you ever had that thought yourself? Because there's that huge perception outside of the tested lifters where people are skeptical. Yeah. Uh, and I would say I, I definitely have. And I say it's more to do with the look yeah. or um, injury risk or like how injured they are all the time. So Candido um, said. Yeah, that's a huge red flag to me. Uh, but outside of that, no, typically, and, and here's another example, right? Um, typically, they get caught eventually. Uh, so Jamal Browner being a big example of that, like he got caught. Um, and, you know, eventually, if you keep going, especially if you're going to compete at international comps, um, that is an easy one to get uh, because they will test those people. If you're flying to do an international IPF meet, they'll pick you versus other people that just aren't going to be there. So there's stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, there's definitely people I see, man. Okay. That's, that's good. That's a good perspective. Cause I, I you know, I don't want you to ever have to like out anybody, but mm -hmm. it's good to know that even within your field, you're like, okay, I'm a little skeptical of some of these people. Um, and I think Jamal, Jamal's was, he pulled 794 that meet 360 KG. No, he didn't. <laughs> he 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 failed. He he didn't get there. No, I thought he pulled the three sixty at the Toronto meet. And that was the one he got popped at. No, he missed. He missed it. If Let you, me see. Um, so the NAP, uh, no, not NAPS. The CPU meet. Yeah, he missed three sixty five. He only pulled seven seventy seven. Ah, oh, yeah, he tried eight hundred four. You're right. Okay. Yeah, that was he, the meet where it, where everything came out, right? Yep. Yep. You know he, he he didn't have a good me good me. Yeah, he squatted six oh six, bench four oh two, seven seventy seven deadlift. I mean the respectable numbers, two thirty one class, but what what did he pop for? Was it um uh it was uh Terrinaball, maybe? Yeah, it was Terrinaball. Uh, see I've you know it's funny in all my years of PED use, I've never used Terrinaball because it's like there's what far is it? better. It's a mild oral, so it's an oral. It's very mild and supposedly has a very short half-life from what I remember. I, I, I've i never personally ran it because, you know, in my day, like, it was like you take everything that's strong. You don't take weak stuff like Turnable. Turnable mm -hmm. is a steroid, but it's one of the weaker ones. So, like, there's way better. D-ball is way better, stuff like that. Um, but I believe the reason people like it is the half-life is relatively short. That's what a lot of MMA fighters pop for. So, let me actually see here because this is interesting. Let's see. Turnable half-life. I wonder how much um, people may abuse like suspensions or bases that are in and out of your system very quick. Is this correct? It says that the half-life is 16 hours. Whew. That would make some sense. But it can be detected for four to six months. Interesting. Because he, he tried to claim the pre-workout you know, excuse. What do you think about that? And what do you think about like Norris doing the same thing? Because Norris um, was a what he got popped for some banned stimulant or something. Yeah, he that's what happened. So I know that it's it is true that some like products can be tainted by you know whatever they're mixing at whatever lab that it could have residue in it. It could have this, um, but I think that's like still not a great excuse no matter what. And then the other guy, Kelly Branton. Yeah, he, well, he was definitely a cheater. <laughs> Yeah, but he, he tried to claim the pre-workout, too. Right, but the, he had, like, multiple things, right? It I was, think so, but it was funny because Hack, like, was making a joke on Instagram after that about the pre-workout he claimed, and the company emailed him, like, hey, man, can you take that down? It's bad for our, <laughs> bad for our advertising. I was like, oh, crap. So that was kind of funny. No, it's interesting, though, too. Like, and I got nothing against Jamal or anything, and we don't work good with him, you know, nothing like that. It's just interesting, too, because, like, see where his numbers are now? It's like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes me wonder sometimes I can't help, but think like I often, I'm like, how strong would guys like you be if you hopped on PEDs? Like, holy hell, like Jamal's pulling a grand. And if he was, let's say he was at a like 777 or 771 before his, uh, before he got on PEDs. Well, you're at 844. Like, holy hell. If I'm in doing a way, the math in, in a way class head, below. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing the math in my head. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what? You know, it's like, 
Do you ever think that too? Do you ever have that thought where you're like, what would I be doing? Yeah, but I know there's no way in hell I would do that. What are your reasons <laughs> for not doing it? Um, I, I think it's just like the biggest thing is just not worth it on my system. And I'm terrified of getting injured, like s- severely injured, like tearing biceps, tearing quad tendons and whatever this, all that kind of stuff is just terrifying to me. And that from, from my perspective is usually why that happens. Um, even, even hack, like hack is a great example of someone that was like a very high level you know, tested lifter that, you know, he gets on, you know, and starts using. And then all of a sudden, boom, starts shooting up like crazy. Every, all his numbers take off. Um, but eventually you still get to that point where your like connective tissue, your joints, all that stuff cannot handle um, what you're doing, right? Like, and you start tearing muscles or whatever it is. Um, and for me, that just seems like never worth it. Um, I, I would say something like TRT for me, um, when I'm like 40 or something, maybe a good option. Um, but I'm, I was kind of curious. I was going to ask you this too. Is, is, is there a reason why you won't use that now? Oh, the, one of the main reasons, this is actually good. Yeah. One of the main reasons my weight would shoot up a good 20 pounds. If I just took TRT even, so even right if you now, restricted your diet, it would still shoot up. Like you'll literally gain muscle without even mm-hmm. training. Like, yeah. and to be honest, I'm at a point in my career where I'm just like, I'm not training that hard. It's whatever, you know, I'm past it, but I'm a uh, 225 pounds. Let's say that's what I'm at right now. I would be minimum 240, probably 245 on TRT. And it, to me, the, the thing with that is the sleep apnea. I had a really bad sleep apnea. My neck was like thicker than now. You already, it's pretty thick, but like now back then it was crazy. And I could sleep like nine hours, be exhausted. And you could, you know, you could say, just get a CPAP, but I honestly hate CPAPs. I can't sleep with them on and I don't snore anymore. I, I can sleep like six and a half hours, six hours and I feel great. So that's one of the main reasons. Like, I'm just like, I don't want to deal with sleep apnea again and feel exhausted all the time. And whether you like it or not, like whether it's muscle or fat, the heavier you are, the harder it is on your body. So if I'm 240, 245, even if it's muscle, I'm less healthy than at a lighter weight. And really, I should try to get down to like 215, 97 kg, but it's just, I want to be lighter. I'm not trying to set records anymore. I'm not going to. My body is destroyed, dude. My body is like, it's so beat up. Even if I took anabolics again, I wouldn't be able to hit probably what I hit back then because there's so much damage wear and tear, kind of what you talked about. So it's not even, there's no point for me to even do anything. Like I'm not going to be pushing the numbers I was, I feel like. And those are really the main motivations, but I also, I'm literally sick of needles. Like I did it for so long. You become a pin cushion chance. Like you're a pin. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't, I stuck needles in myself for, for nine years. I don't feel like doing it anymore. It's, it becomes very, you, you get over it. Like you're not like afraid of the needles, but you're just like, this is so annoying. Like I have to like pin again. It's been a week. It's been a couple of days. I got to take a shot. Who wants so would to you, be dependent on that? Would you have, I mean, I don't know. Again, I don't even know about TRT. Do you have to take it once a week? Do you have to do it every few days? What is it? Roughly the doctors administer it once.